Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Hey everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the History AI Podcast. I'm your host Chuck. And I'm Marco. And today, we're going back in time, to the age of powdered wigs and horse-drawn carriages, to dig deep into the life of one of America's founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson. That's right. The author of the Declaration of Independence, the third U.S. president, and the man whose face you'll find on the U.S. nickel. But also, a man full of complexities, controversies, and contradictions. So, let's start with the basics, shall we? Jefferson was born in Virginia in 1743. His family was quite prominent in Virginia society. His father was a planter and a surveyor, and his mother, Jane Randolph, came from one of Virginia's most distinguished families. Right. That early environment had a lot to do with shaping Jefferson's worldview. He was educated at the College of William and Mary and went on to become a lawyer. He was quite the Renaissance man. Apart from politics, he had interests in architecture, music, and even invented a few things including the swivel chair. Imagine, without Jefferson, we wouldn't have the fun of spinning around in office chairs. Moving to his personal life, Jefferson married Martha Wales in 1772. They had six children together, but only two of them, Martha and Mary, survived to adulthood. Now, while his family life seemed settled, politically, America was anything but. The colonies were moving towards a massive conflict with Great Britain, and Jefferson would be right in the center of it. In 1774, he wrote a summary view of the rights of British America, which expressed his belief in the idea that people have the right to govern themselves. And that set the stage for what's probably his most famous work. Absolutely. In 1776, he was chosen to draft the Declaration of Independence. In it, he laid out the American colony's case for breaking away from Britain. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Such powerful words that still resonate today. During the Revolution, Jefferson went back to Virginia and served as the state's governor. But post the Revolution, he went off to France. Ah, la belle France. And he wasn't there on vacation. Jefferson served as the U.S. minister to France, replacing Benjamin Franklin. Speaking of not being on a vacation, let's take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. When the world hits hard, hit back harder with Strike Force Energy. The zero sugar, zero calorie, power packed energy drink additive that fuels your adventure. Just a quick squeeze turns any drink into a relentless power source. Perfect for your workout, your hike, your life. Ready to strike? Visit StrikeForceEnergy.com, use coupon code UTSALAX24 for an explosive 20% off your order. Strike Force Energy, unleash your potential. Strike Force Energy, fuel the fight within you. Welcome back. Now, while in France, Jefferson was enamored by French culture, but he was also witnessing the early stages of the French Revolution. This experience was crucial. Upon his return, he found America grappling with its new constitution. Jefferson feared a strong central government and advocated for states' rights. This led him to side with the Democratic Republicans against the Federalists. And here's where his rivalry with Alexander Hamilton, the Federalist leader, began. They had polar opposite views on almost everything from finance, foreign policy, to the role of government itself. Hamilton, with his dreams of a strong central government, and Jefferson, the champion of agrarian values and states' rights. Sparks were bound to fly. This ideological divide laid the foundation for the first political parties in America. Jefferson eventually became vice president under John Adams. But their differences were clear, and in the election of 1800, they faced off. And what an election that was. The House of Representatives had to break a tie between Jefferson and Aaron Burr, with Jefferson finally winning the presidency. As president, Jefferson made some significant moves. He secured the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, doubling the size of the U.S. But he also faced challenges, like the Barbary Wars against North African states. Now, we can't talk about Jefferson without delving into his friendship with John Adams. They were close during the drafting of the Declaration but grew apart due to political differences. And yet, their bond was so strong that they began corresponding again in their later years, sharing over 150 letters. It's poetic, really. 
two founding fathers, with a friendship, a rivalry, and then a reconciliation. And in a twist of fate, they both died on the same day, July 4, 1826, exactly 50 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Talk about timing. Absolutely. So, as we wrap up, it's clear that Jefferson's legacy is multifaceted. He was a man of the Enlightenment, deeply influenced by its values, but he was also a man of his times, with all the complexities that came with it. And that's what makes history so intriguing, isn't it? The blend of ideals with human frailty and complexity. Couldn't have put it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the life of Thomas Jefferson. We'll be back with another episode soon. Until then, keep your historical curiosity alive and remember, those who don't know history are destined to, well, not get our jokes. Be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time.